Okay, so this lecture we're gonna talk about connectedness of a topological space. And connected is a, a very intuitive idea. Basically, says that a topological space cannot be uh, separated with two globs, and each globs are open in X. So this is something called separation. Okay, so in this definition, we're given a topological space, and we say the set U V is a separation of X if they're both open and uh, they're disjoint and their union is X. And there's one more requirement is that U and V are non-empty. Okay. So this is what we mean by a separation is that U and V this gives separates the space X this is called uh, this a uh, separation of X so we say that the space X is disconnected right and we say X is X connected if it has no separation so you cannot separate the space then the space is said to be connected <laughs> so observe that the connectedness of the topological space it is in fact a topological property what it means is that if X is connected and Y is homeomorphic with X, then Y is also connected. And the verification is really quick. So we suppose that there we have a separation of Y, then the pre-image right, is open because F is a homeomorphism. Right? Or you can interpret this as the image of F inverse under W1. Because it's a bijection, right? So it does, doesn't really matter. And empty set, which is equal to F inverse of empty set, right? And here we're just using the properties of pre images. And we see that we have a separation of X. Right? We have a separation of X, right? And both of them are not empty because W1 and W2 are not empty. So I, I just didn't write it because it's for you to, to bring it up. Right. So. Okay, so another characterization or another way to describe a space to be connected is to say that the only clopen sets in X are X and the empty sets. So clopen means close and open. So let's see why this is true. So here's the verification. So suppose that A is another clopen set other than X and the empty set. Then we let U equals to A. V is the complement of A and X. Then this is the separation of X because A is clopen. Conversely, if we have a separation of X, then we have those. Right? So U is closed and V is closed. Right, conversely. And now we're gonna relate the connectedness to subspaces. So given a subspace of X, and we describe the separation of this subspace. So here's the lemma states that um, if A, B separates the space Y, then they should be disjoint, non-empty union of Y, and we have uh, these two conditions is that the closure of A intersect B gives the empty set and the, the closure of B intersects A gives you the empty set so they're disjoint so they don't contain each other's limit points okay all right so here's the proof from this way and uh, if A B separation of Y then A is clopen of Y Right, A is clopen on Y, then the closure of A and Y is equal to this. Right. We know this is um true by lecture probably lecture five, right? Or like lecture five. So the closure of A and the subspace is really just the closure of A and the original space intersect with the subspace. And A is closed means that we have this. 
closure of a and y is equal to a because a is closed and y a is closed and y thus we have a bar intersect b right it gives you the empty set because a except b this a except b right gives you the empty set similar for b so with this implication we're done now for the converse well for the converse we see that oh a closure of a intersect y is equal to this and we use the distributive property right right here's the distributive property but simplified when this gives you a Here we have distributed a bar intersect a union b becomes a bar union uh, sorry the distributed law gets me wait let me search it up right now distributive law oh my oh my Distributed law for sets. Okay, so here we have okay, a bar intersect a union b should give you a bar union a union a bar intersect b, right? And uh, we assume okay so this is empty and a bar intersect a gives you a okay so we could just go from here to here directly okay this is by the distributive law of sets and this really shows that a is closed and we can also show that b is closed right you get a similar way like b bar ends at y and blah 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 <laughs> right, so and we have this which means that a is also open Right, and B is also open. Um, and Y, right? Open and Y. Okay, so yeah, here this is what we really have done because we already assumed that they're disjoint, non empty, and union is Y. So the only thing we have to show that is that they are open. And we see that they are open. Okay. Okay. Now, no lemma, given a separation of the space X and Y is a connected subspace of X, then Y is, should be contained entirely in C or entirely in D. I think this is uh, intuitively true, right? Because if you have a space X connected, sorry, if you have a separation of X, C and D, and Y is a connected subspace of X, then Y should either be entirely in C or entirely in D, not something like this, because this region is a problematic area. So, and the lemma states that this is true. Our intuition is true because C and S, Y and D, they're open in Y, right? And they are disjoint union of Y. Mm -hmm. They're disjoint and take their union gives you Y so they are non-empty disjoint union of y. Okay, so at least one of them. Okay, they're disjoint union of y and they're open. So one must one of them must be empty, right? Otherwise, y will be disconnected. So one of them must be empty. So which means that y is in C or y is in D. Okay, now more more and more properties of connected spaces given a collection of connected spaces such that they have a point in common then their union is a connected subspace of x so their union the set of their union equipped it with the subspace topology inherited by x this topology is a connected space this space is a connected space okay so this is the what we really mean here okay now let's see d separates y 
and the suppose our condition right let, let the cd be a separation okay now we know that p is in all the la alpha so p must be in y so without loss of generality let p be in c okay now for p b and c first as y belongs to x then each a alpha is connected subspace of y so why is this true? We know that A alpha is a connected subset of X. And now we, because Y is contained in X, A alpha is a connected subspace of Y. So think about what this really means. Okay. Think about this, what this really means. So um, what is talking about here? is that okay so what it really means here is that okay if you have x contain and y contain and z the space z okay and uh, let's say t x t y uh, t z t x t y Tx is topology on z. Okay, it's topology on z. Sorry. Tx, Ty are subspace topology inherited by topology on z. So given this the topology on Z, right, and we give X and Y the subspace topology inherited from from by Z. Okay. So right here is what our story here is that we have X, Y, and A alpha. Right? This is our story, right, in our scenario. So we see that okay. And in our thing, we said y is a, we give it this subspace right? So y is subspace of x. And a alpha, a alpha, they're also subspace of x, right? So what we here have here is true. And what I claim here is that a alpha is a connected subspace of y. So what this really means is that Let this be the topology on X inherited from by inherited by by D topology on Y. Right? With A alpha is a subspace on Y. So give this topology on the smallest space another topology that is inherited as a subspace of y but the topology on y is subspace of tz and the claim is that this new topology txy is precisely equal to the original topology inherited by tz because that y is contained in z I'll leave for you to verify, okay? And the verification is really, really simple. Just follow by definition, all right? So this is um, what we have, right? This is what we mean. This is what we mean by, by uh, what we mean by this, right? This is what we mean by this. Okay, let me just circle this up. Right, now, so A alpha, why is it connected to subset of Y? Because this topology is connected, right? Right, I hope you get what I'm saying. Because A alpha, is a, we give it a subspace from X, and this topology is the exact same as the subset topology on Y, 
And we given that each A alpha is con this topology is connected, and because their topology is the same, this is connected and this is connected. Okay. So, I hope this clarifies um, the amb ambiguity in the text that it gets me when I'm first time reading it. Okay. So sometimes they just skip some details, but the details are actually worth explaining okay so now because a alpha is a connected subset of y so by the lemma we have separation of y so either a alpha is in c or a alpha is in d right so we put but p is in c so a alpha must be contained entirely in c because if a alpha is in d it will be a contradiction because c and d are are disjoint. All the A alpha is in C. So their union is in C. Y is in C union D, but Y is entirely in C implies D is empty. Okay? A contradiction. Okay, so we're gonna use this to prove that the finite Cartesian product of connected sets, uh, connected spaces is a connected space. The product of body. Okay, so this theorem, um, this theorem again states that the closure is also connected. If A is a connected subset of X, then the for any B, right, as between A and A closure, then B is also connected. Give the subspace of X. Right. So this really means that A closure is also connected subspace. So the proof, again, right, there's no other way to show that a space is connected. Just to show that, suppose there's a separation and we get a contradiction. Suppose there's a separation. A is connected subspace of B. Then, we have, yes, we, we give B a subject of X, and A is again contained in B, right? A is connected to X, so A is connected to the B. See, this is what we've been using here, right? So, we have, without loss of generality, right? A should be contained in C, because we assume there's separation, right? And by this lemma here, by this lemma here, right? So, then, a contained in C, so A closure contained in C closure, but C closure in this D gives you um, empty, right? Because we have a separation for a subspace of X. We have a separation for a subspace of X. And we see that associative of X is a separation, if only, okay, we have those, right? At least we have, we have those, right? So here, CD, we have this. So A bar, right? A bar and D are disjoint. B contain and A bar again, B and D are disjoint. So the D is this contain and B, right? This really means that D is, should be the empty set. Right? Again, a contradiction. Okay, so. Now we relate it to continuous functions. Is that, okay, given two spaces, X and Y, X is connected. We have a continuous function from X to Y, then the image, FX, is a connected subspace of Y. And this is really easy by using the Y, because G, okay, we restrict the range of F. This, this function is obtained by restrict the range of um, F. And this is continuous by a lecture four, because G is surjective, right? So suppose that Z is a separation of Z, then we have those a separation of X. This is exactly as how I show that um, the connectedness is a topological property. And here we really, okay, homeomorphism definitely holds, right? But all we really need is that F to be continuous and surjective, right? It's a quotient quotient happening, right? Some quotient map stuff happening. 
Well, not now. Okay, so we're gonna prove that um, the Cartesian product of connective spaces is connected. Okay, so um, given y and x spaces, so here's a diagram. So we, we pick a space x and we, we do the subspace x times the entire y, which is represented by the ray here. And we pick a point b and y, extend the ray, this gives us space b and x. So and this point A and X, B and Y gives you a point uh, A times B, right? A times B. Okay. So now we first we know that the space is connected. B times X is connected. Since B times X and X is a homeomorphism, via the map, BX is equal to FX is equal to BX. And every image of the, uh, sorry, f negative one bx gives you x so this is really a homeomorphism right? and also for any x and x right x times y is so homeomorphic to y so if we represent tx as this times this so the cross the cross area the cross region x times b times x times y the cross region, they have a point in common, right? X, B, it, they have a point in common, right? So this cross region is connected because this is a union of connected subspace that has a point in common. And the point A, B, point A, B, is in all the tx, right? Is in all the tx, right? And right, the a the point a b is in all the tx for all x and x, and the union of all the tx is really just x times y. Is 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 a connected subspace of x times y, but this is equal to x times y. So, the subspace of x inherited the subspace of x. Inherited by x is equal to the topology on x, right? Because any point, any subset a of x, a intersect x gives you x, uh, a. They have the exact same open sets. Right. So, so finite product is still connected by induction, right? Um, the induction we need to show that x times y times z is times z is homeomorphic with x times y times z, okay? And then that is really just um, play around with the parentheses, right? If, if you just map a, b, c to a, b, c, right? You just re remove the parentheses. And for the inverse image, Right, you just in, add the parentheses back. And this is a natural homeomorphism. Right? Natural homeomorphism. Right. So so in induction, right? X and minus one cross times X N is homeomorphic. And this is continuous by induction hypothesis. Uh, sorry, this is connected by induction hypothesis. And this is really just right, x i i from one to n. Right? So homeomorphism right, preserves connectedness, though the finite uh, product is continuous, as desired. So I can just show it right now. So I just freestyle the proof. So it's not really that hard. And now it's time to go back to the real number cases, back to the real lines. And the theorem is that, not okay. So the history of behind this is that this is not really a okay. It's a theorem for now, as a true statement. But the notion of connectedness actually came from the intervals and rays from from the real line because 
intervals, they're just an interval. They're, they're connected, right? And when we generalize to arbitrary topological spaces, we want um, the properties that the intervals has, and we can do math on arbitrary connected spaces, right? Okay. So all is that, that we observe, not observe, we uh, um, distract the important properties. We see the, the structure of connectedness and then we apply it to arbitrary to logical spaces. So, so we're gonna prove something that is amazing, right? Something amazing. And from now, is there, and is it our case, but is in fact our motivation, right? So a theorem, in our context, intervals raise and are connected. And in a textbook, it's really just said that um, any, any is stated in a different way, but all I care is that, okay, it says that if L is linear continuum in order topology, then it is connected, and so our intervals raise. But all we care is like, R is the, like the linear continuum we really care, right, with order topology. And at least in, in this course. Okay, that was too much. Okay. So let's start the proof. So recall that the subset Y of R is convex if for any B and Y such that A is less than B, then the interval A, B is connected, uh, sorry, is contained in Y. Right, we recall the definition of convex and we show that y is convex implies that y is connected subspace of r. So if we show this, then intervals and rays, they're all convex sets. Right. So they're connected. Suppose for a contradiction, the convex set has a separation, and we pick two points, and then b respectively, we'll log a less than b because the y is convex, right? Now, AB can be written as a union of two sets A0 and B0, where A0 is equal to AB inside A, B0 is AB intersect B. Because A0 and B0 is open in AB with the subset topology, right? inherited from Y, right? Because A and B are open in Y. Inherited, inherited by y. So now we say that, well, the same as we inherited by r, right? We've been we've been using this uh, <coughs> multiple times. So we give y the order topology because y is convex. If it's convex, I talked about this in the very uh, in the second lecture. That if a set is convex, right, a convex set, then the subset topology is equivalent to the order topology on the set itself, right? So we give y the order topology. Okay, we just give y the order topology, then again, AB is also convex, the interval is convex, so the subset topology on AB is the same as the order topology itself on AB. So now, oof, a naught, B naught is open in the order topology. A is an A naught, B is an B naught. We see that A naught, B naught, they're disjoint and their union gives you the entire space, right? Now, moreover, A naught is a subset of AB, so it is bounded above by B. If it's bounded above, because R is a linear continuum as a supremum, C, we denote this C as the supremum of the least upper bound of A0, it is not both an A0 and B0, which gives a contradiction. Okay. So first, let's say if C is in B0, then C is not equal to A, definitely. So either C is equal to B or C is between A and B, strictly. B0 is open in this with the order topology. If C is in B, if C is equal to B, right, then C is really in some basis element. Right, containing some basis element in the order of the body. Remember, remember how we define a basis for an ordered set, right? Such that this ordered set has a maximum, right? This is a basis element. If 
by the definition of aortic apology. So, all as you can like already see, right? If this is C, D, this is all in B naught, right? And we really see that D is also an upper bound for A naught, right? Because everything here is in B naught, it cannot be in A naught. So D is a, a, a smaller upper bound than C for the set A naught, which contradicts the fact that C is a upper bound, at least upper bound. Yes, this is what I'm saying, right? Now, so suppose C is less than B. Okay, if C is less than B, B, C, so let's say A is here, right? Because, okay, C is less than B, then, because C is an upper bound, right? So everything here must be in B naught. Everything here must be in B naught, right? And C is also in B naught. So C, if C is in B naught and is contained in some basis element, no matter it's like this or is like this, right? But anyways, C, we can find a DC, right? C, a DC that's contained in B naught, and then we, we extend it to, the B, we have a DB is contained in B naught. And again, right, again, we have this scenario that this everything here is in B naught. So D again on a smaller upper bound than C for A naught. Contradiction. So B naught is a horrible thing. Suppose that C is in A naught. If C is in A naught, then C cannot be equal to B. Right, so either C is equal to A, or C is between A and B. Well, because A naught is open in AB, right? So again, uh, we use the same, uh, very same thing, uh, very the same thing, is that we can find an E such that CE is contained all in A naught, right, for some E. But if CE is all contained in A naught, right? C must be an upper bound, but we can find something that is greater than C that is also an A, right? Again, a contradiction. So that's the contradiction. C is not an A naught nor B naught. So we verify that intervals and rays and R are connected and by our definition. And all this is based on our knowledge from the order topology. Now so we're going to um, prove the intermediate value theorem. The intermediate value theorem states that, okay, if x is connected, y is the order set with the order topology, and you have a continuous from the connect set to the order set, order, order space, then for any a, b, and x, such that r is between f, a, and f, b, right? f, a, f, b. You have a point r. Then, right, you have FC, right, or FC such as FC is equal to R. Right, this intermediate value theorem is that the space is a line, right? So you have a point at the bottom, you have a point on the top, right? And the, func the, the function, the path drawn by the function, any point between them has another, another value that attains this, another input that attains this value. And this is really by the connectedness, right? Based on the connectedness. The proof is too easy. Suppose for a contradiction, like for connected spaces, we always start to prove with a contradiction because the way we define connected is by negation of existing a separation. So we suppose there's a separation, right? And then we can work with it. Okay. <sighs> okay. Now we're going to be move on to something that is stronger than continuity. Sorry, stronger than connectedness, which is called path connected. So given a space, x, y, and x, a path from x to y is a function from the real line, from the real interval, a, b, to x continuous, such that f, 
sorry. Why is this? Sorry. F A gives you X and F B gives you Y. Right? F A gives you X, F B gives you Y. And the space is called path connected. If any two points can be adjoined by path. A remark is that path connected implies connected. So suppose X is path connected and we give a separation. And we pick two points and then we adjoin the path between them. Right? We join the path between X and Y. Because the image F A B is connected subset of X. So either so without laws of generality, let's say this is containing U. Well, FB is equal to Y, but Y is in U, and Y is also in V. Why is it in an empty set? Contradiction. Example, so a unit ball is path connected, definitely, and the punctured plane, the punctured Euclidean space is also path connected. And now we're going to look at an example, the last example of showing that connected does not imply path connected. So path connectedness is strictly stronger than connectedness. So we let S to be um, the, the set of Cartesian products. The first coordinate X, the second coordinate is this, the basic is the graph of the function sine 1 over X. Where x is from 0 1 is really the graph of it okay so this is the graph it is connected subspace of r squared because connected is preserves products right think about it right continuous functions composition of continuous functions so s closure is also connected so here i've drawn the graph is for the closure of s right it includes the the uh, axis y axis 0 to 1 Sorry, negative one to one on the y axis. Claim. So we claim that this is not path connected. We know it is connected, but it's not path connected. For if we have a function from A C to S bar such that it connected it connects the origin and some any anything in S. Or anything else in S, right? It connects, okay, I mean, okay, this is not like the straight line, but anyway, suppose there's a path, right, from the thing on the origin to FC equal to S, right? Since this is a closed set, we all agree, F is continuous, so this is a closed and AC, right? It is closed in AC. Yes. Why am I? Okay, it should be, I think, right? It should be closed in a uh, bracket, right? Is a closed set and AC is bounded above, so we pick B to be the suprema such that FB is on the axis, right? Okay, so this is really happens to be the last point on, on the, the real axis, because then for F from B, C to S closure, such that FB is on an axis and all other is in X, is in S. Is an S. And why is that FB is in this? It's because, uh, okay, we pick B to be the supremum, but this set is happens to be the closed set. Notice that the supremum is really a limit point of the, of the set. Right? This is, the supremum is the limit point, right? Closed set contains this limit point. So B is contained in this, so FB is not this. And B is the supremum, so anything else should be on should be in this. Now, so with for simplicity, 
let b c equal to zero one. And we consider f t to x t and y t the two components. With x zero is zero, right? And for t greater than zero, x t should be greater than zero, right? Because you're at the last point uh, here, and for t increase a bit, x t is greater than zero because x t and y t they're in s, right? All other in s. So. And we know that f is continuous. So this implies that x and y are both continuous. But we can construct a sequence that shows that y is not continuous. Because for any n, we can pick a u such that sine of 1 over u is negative 1 to the power of n. But because it oscillates really, really fast, it oscillates really, really fast, right? So by analysis, right, I just didn't prove it. But it is obviously true, right? We pick a u between this such that this is equal to negative one to the n, and then we use IVT, right? To find, to find t between um zero and one of n such that x of this t n gives you this u, right? X zero, x one over n of a t n such that x of t n is this u and as u is picked such that this so x t n is the u for this x t n is the u y t n is equal to negative 1 to the power of n so this sequence right this sequence t n the sequence t n yeah it converges to 0 but y t n does not converge it's between ne it's negative 1 and 1 negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1 is not converging, right? Which shows that y is not continuous. So here's the contradiction. Right? So this is not path connected, but it is connected, okay? And this um, curve is called the topologist sine curve. Okay, and and this is it. And for the next lecture, we're going to talk about local connectedness, connected components, and we're going to start with some definition of a space for of being a compact. Okay, see you guys next time.